the turnover. It's a 24 second vi violation. But Kay Felder's getting one last Jimmy up. And this one finally coming to an end. LeBron James not playing for the Cavs. And the Clippers get a much needed win. They snap a three game losing streak as they beat the Cavs for the second time this season. In both meetings between the two, James will play tomorrow night when the Cavs play the Lakers right back here on this floor. And I've never Cleveland. seen two opponents have a handshake together, you know, a personalized handshake. Well, those two are good buddies. Meanwhile, Blake Griffin, a strong game, 23 points, eight rebounds, four assists. He's with Lisa. Thank you, Mike. Like you guys have been struggling coming into this game. What was different tonight? Uh, we got stops. You know, uh, our defense has uh, been shaky lately. And, uh, you know, when we're getting stops, we get some easy buckets transi in transition. Um, it allows our offense to flow when we're not in transition. He had 23 points tonight, but a big third quarter, 13 in the third. And I asked Doc Rivers after that quarter, you know, what was the key then? He said, we were going to them. When they start feeding you like that, what's your mindset? Uh, to try to make plays, you know, we have a uh, you know, CP who's you know, the best passer in the league. So uh, whenever he goes to me, you know, I'm, I'm uh, trying to either set guys up or, or get to the rim or you know, do whatever it takes. Now, a lot has been said about their big three not playing. What was your reaction when you heard that their big three weren't going to be on the floor tonight? I mean, it happens. Scheduling is, is crazy. We've had a, a crazy month. Um, you know, we've set guys here and there. Other teams have done it. So, um, you know, it happens. Do you guys care who's on the floor for the other team? Uh, I mean, we want to win regardless. All right, thank you, Blake. Thank Congratulations. You. Mike. Thank you, Lisa. Well, we've got a special Tuesday night edition of NBA Doubleheader on ESPN. First at seven, Bulls and Raptors from Toronto. Raptors and Bulls both fighting for playoff spots and positioning. And then at 9.30, Spurs and the Timberwolves from Minneapolis. Final score, 108-78. We'll be back at the Staples Center with more after this timeout. Here at the Staples Center, Clippers take advantage of the shorthanded Cavs, and we easily, by 30, to snap a three-game losing streak. Meanwhile, next Sunday, that's our game on ABC from Houston Thunder and the Rockets. These two spectacular players, probably the two leading candidates for the MVP. Westbrook on the verge of getting a triple-double for the entire season. So LeBron James did make a couple of friends, but he didn't play tonight. And the beneficiary, the L.A. Clippers. So for producer Tim Corrigan, director Jimmy Moore, and our outstanding ABC crew, of course, with Jeff and Mark and Lisa, Mike Breen saying thanks for watching ABC, home of the NBA Finals. Stay tuned. We'll head to the studio with Sage coming up after these messages. You're watching Toyota Sports Extra with Pierre Newsham. And welcome into a special edition of Toyota Sports Extra. I'm Pierre Nugent. We kick things off in the NBA where the Young Kings return to work in Oklahoma City, taking on Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. An early tip for today's game. It began at noon local time, and the Kings didn't really look like they were ready to play. You know who was ready to play, though? Mr. Triple-Double himself, Russell Westbrook. Now, he didn't finish with the triple-double in today's game, but he shredded the Kings every which way he could. The dish there to Steven Adams for the easy two. Just before the end of the first half, Westbrook pulls up from downtown and hits it like it's nothing. Nothing. Oklahoma City led big at the half. Third quarter, more Westbrook. And he finds an opening accelerates and throws it down with the right hand. The Thunder make quick work of the Kings, winning at 110-94. A career day for Kings rookie George Papianis, scoring 14 points and grabbing 11 rebounds. Kings back in action tomorrow in San Antonio against the Spurs. Elsewhere in the NBA, another primetime game featuring a team that decides to rest all of their stars. Cleveland resting LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Kyrie Irving. It was a game you saw right here on ABC 10. Cavaliers on the road taking on Chris Paul and the Clippers, and this would turn into a runaway for Los Angeles. Who would have thought 
Blake Griffin leading the charge for the Clippers with a game high 23 points and the Clippers knock off the Cavs 108 78. The NBA needs to fix this. Can't have this soft mentality of resting guys every other game. It's ridiculous. Let's take you to last night's action down in Los Angeles between the Bucks and Clippers. LA's Nick Young goes up to try to score. Malcolm Brogdon commits a hard foul, but in my opinion, there's nothing malicious about that foul. Young obviously disagrees, and we got some pushing and shoving. Young, along with his teammate D'Angelo Russell and Milwaukee's Greg Monroe, were ejected. I'm honestly embarrassed for Nick Young. To take exception to this, give me a break. This used to be a good, hard basketball play. There's nothing dirty about that, but guys apparently can't take a hard foul anymore, and it results in something like this. That is a complete joke. There's no reason to react like that. All right, let's go to March of Madness now. Raise your hand if you had Villanova winning it all in your bracket. If you're like me, tear up your bracket and lie to yourself and say you'll never fill out a bracket ever again. We've got our first major upset of the tournament as number eight Wisconsin erases a seven point deficit late in the game to storm back and knock off the overall number one seed in the tournament Villanova. Down go the champs. Wisconsin wins at 65 62 advancing to the sweet 16 Villanova falling short of defending their national championship and when we come back the Aggies of UC Davis back in town after their run in the men's NCAA tournament. We'll hear from the Aggies back in 30 seconds. Welcome to our One for Everyone sales event. We're looking for something reliable. Every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. It's our two-year or 25,000-mile maintenance plan. I can do my own maintenance. Also includes 24-hour roadside assistance. All roadside my own assistance. Thank you. At no additional cost. That's great. Okay, yeah. Just Let's sign us up. Right now, get the lowest payments of the year. Lease a Corolla for just $149 a month or a Camry for $189 a month. Or save big with 0% financing for 72 months. Now we can sell your tools. Toyota, let's go places. You're watching Toyota Sports Extra with Pierre Newsham. Well, it was an incredible ride for the men's basketball team at UC Davis. They became the first ever Aggie team to ever qualify for the men's NCAA tournament. Their March Madness run came to an end yesterday after falling to Kansas, but today they were all smiles touching down here in Northern California. This was the scene this afternoon at the Sacramento airport. The Aggies coming home with a few souvenirs from the NCAA tournament. Not only did they become the first Aggie team to qualify for the postseason tournament, they recorded their first ever NCAA tournament win Wednesday night over NC Central. The Kansas Jayhawks, meanwhile, were just too tough to overcome and eliminated the Aggies last night. But this team won't be remembered for that. They'll be remembered for making history, and the seniors say they couldn't have asked for more. A dream come true, if you would say, you know, we've been thinking about this since we were little kids, to be at this stage, to be able to do the things that we did, it's just incredible. You know, it really hasn't sunk in the magnitude of what we did to be able to represent the university in the way it was and to have the whole entire school, the whole entire community having our backs. I mean, it was everything that I've ever thought of, especially being a Sacramento kid. It just feels amazing that we were able to represent our school and our community and of UC Davis and, you know, just kind of put us on the map and, um, you know, show that there's excellence outside of school. You know, we're an excellent athletic uh, program, basketball program and everything and uh, like I said it was just an amazing experience and you know I wouldn't trade in for nothing. When playing right back all the tears were left in in uh, Tulsa man we came back excited um, we did our job we left it better than what we came in with so to, to come back and not be satisfied I, I don't see that happening you know we, we, we did our job. Well, what the players didn't realize was there would be a healthy group of Aggie fans and alumni waiting for them when they made it back to campus. The band was playing, the cheer team was out in full force, as were the students. The men's basketball team getting a hero's welcome, if you will, after providing the student body with a thrilling last couple of weeks. This is what makes college sports really, really fun. There's a sense of pride that you can't find anywhere else other than a college campus when you get behind a team like this. And head coach Jim Les credits the fans and his players for putting together such a memorable run. It's really touching uh, that this group of guys playing basketball and how many 
lives they've touched. They've energized this campus. They've energized this community. They've, they've energized uh, Aggies all across the world. I've been getting emails and text messages from, from every corner of the world, and everybody's got their blue and gold and their Aggie pride on, and, and they're uh, really excited. So that, that's fun to watch, for them to live out their dream and then leave their legacy of being the first ever UC Davis basketball team to play in that tournament and to create uh, this culture of excitement that they have around our basketball program is unique. It'll never be forgotten, and that group will be bonded for the rest of their lives because of this experience. Well, after being around the team a little bit for the past couple of weeks, this was a group of high character young men that represented their university and community with the utmost class. And if you're a student at UC Davis, alumni, heck, it, even if you're not, these young guys are to be commended for their attitudes and heart. And let's hope this is the first of many NCAA tournaments for the Aggies of UC Davis. Finally, from the high school court, we've got a monster rematch happening as we speak between the Shelton Huskies and the Wood Creek Timberwolves. The boys open division regional final taking place right now in Santa Clara. Remember, Wood Creek knocked off Sheldon by one point two weeks ago at the district championship. We'll have an update from that game coming up tonight at 11 and don't go away. Francis is coming back with all your local news and Harry will have your up to the up to the date forecast. Look at that great weather we've been having. Stick around more on ABC 10.